Hi guys, it's Miss Hagen, um, and today we're going to be doing a lesson on the geosphere. Okay, so what we're going to be looking at is what is the geosphere, and we're going to look specifically at the layers of the Earth. Now hopefully you have some idea of what the layers of the Earth are, like the mantle, the core, and the crust. Um, you should have learned that, you know, in earth science back in middle school, and it's been kind of drilled into you a lot. But before we get to that, we need to talk about what is the geosphere. So we're going to talk a lot about a lot of different sphere type things. There are things like the atmosphere, which we're going to talk about later in a later uh, lecture. And then we have the biosphere. Then next comes the hydrosphere. And then lastly, the geosphere. Okay, so we're going to talk about all of these things at some point during the semester. So right now we're going to focus on the geosphere. Now, geosphere and geology have two things in common. Well, really one thing in common. They start with the same prefix, geo. Now, what do you think geo means? Geo means the earth. Okay? Now, the earth as the thing that we stand on, that we live on. It is talking about the non-living function of the earth. Yes, there are non the atmosphere is non-living and the hydrosphere is non-living. Hydrosphere has to deal with water. But this is the non-living part, things that are actually in the earth, on the earth, make up our earth. So what we're going to be looking at um, in the next few lessons is we're going to be looking at the layers of the earth, and the plate tectonics, and the rock cycle. Now you might have be like, oh, rock cycle. Don't worry. That is going to be awesome. Um, we'll make it fun for you. Okay? Now. Layers of the Earth. I'm going to draw. I want to be up close and uh, personal with you and honest. I'm not a very good drawer. It's just not a gift I was given in life, and that's okay. I'm also not a very good speller. So if there's a word misspelled, I'm sorry if it bugs you. Just go by what I'm saying. That's usually what I mean over what I've written. So the first layer we're going to talk about is the crust. Now, you should know a little bit about the crust. I mean, we do live on the crust. Well, technically, we live on all the layers of the earth. But the crust is the one we encounter all the time. Now, the crust is, I'm not, and you know, I'm not talking about the crust on a bread, but. Brett Crow to the front office. Brett Crow to the front office. Ooh. Now, I'm not talking about the crust that's on bread, although that's a really, really great analogy. I'm talking about what we are hopefully sitting on or walking on or doing all kinds of things on. The crust is the thinnest layer that we have of the earth. It only makes up about 1% of the earth. So 1% of the earth, okay? Now, I told you that crust on a bread is a pretty good analogy, and it is, because if we think about a piece of bread, okay, and in that piece of bread, let's, let's just say it's um, honey wheat, because I like honey wheat bread, it's delicious. Um, if you are getting a piece of bread, you have the crust, and the crust should be pretty thin. On most loaf breads, it's thin, and it's thin in comparison to the whole piece of bread, okay? Just like our crust is really thin in comparison to the whole earth. So, it is not only the thinnest layer, it only makes up 1%, but there are two types of crust, okay? Two types. Those types are continental, Continental and oceanic. 
Now, us scientists, we um, are not necessarily known to be the most creative people in the bunch. All the scientists have to be very creative. But we're not very creative when it comes to naming things. We either name things after ourselves or we name things exactly as we mean them to be. So, with that being said, oceanic crusts and continental crusts should completely give away where they are located. Oceanic crusts, yeah, you're right, it should be located in the ocean. Continental crust, continents. Continents. I can't spell continents, okay? It's a problem word for me. But this is where they should be located. All right, so we have continental and oceanic crust. Very, very important. Now, some of, one of these is more dense than the other. Now, when I say dense, I mean one is heavier than the other. Okay? Now, it would make sense that continental crust is thicker. This is the thicker crust because there's more of it. Okay, the oceanic crust is going to be thinner than the continental crust. However, continental crust is not, uh, does not have a higher density than the oceanic. They kind of go like this, okay? Uh, continental, oceanic. There we go. All right, so that's what you need to know about crust. Now, after the crust comes, and you guessed it, the mantle. Okay, now the mantle is really interesting. You might have learned the mantle as the middle part of the earth. Now the mantle has more pieces to it than just the mantle. I like to think of the mantle like this. My last name is Hagen. People know me and my family as the Hagens. Now at my school, people know that I teach there and my dad teaches there. Okay, so. You might say, oh man, you got one of the Hagens as your teacher? That's so cool. Or crap, you got one of the Hagens as your teacher. I don't know how you feel about me. That's okay. Um, but you might not just mean me and my dad. You might mean my mom because my mom's a teacher too. My poor brother, he has no hope. It, he really doesn't. He thinks he does, but he doesn't. So the mantle has three different pieces underneath it. We, that make it up. We have the lithosphere, lithosphere, the asthenosphere, and the mesosphere. So, to go back to my analogy, you may say, oh, well, you have one of the Hagens as a teacher. Well, yeah, you might, but do you have my dad, Paul? Do you have Renee? Or do you have me, Claudia, as your teacher? We all fall under the term Hagen. Just like these three parts of the mantle fall under the term mantle. Mantle is like an umbrella term. It covers and encompasses these three things. Okay? Overall, the mantle makes up 80% of the Earth's mass. So, yeah, that's a lot. That is a lot, a lot. Okay? It's really big. The mantle makes up over 80% of the Earth's mass. Now, there is the upper mantle and lower mantle. So, I will go ahead and tell you that these two, the lithosphere and the asthenosphere, these are upper. Mesosphere, poor thing, it's lower. So, another way I remember this, the top two are like my parents and this is me. They go together. They're higher up in the hierarchy of my family, okay, than I am. So they are upper. Now, the lithosphere is where the tectonic plates are located. So this is the tectonic plates home. Now, the one thing about the lithosphere that's important to remember is the lithosphere sometimes can be classified as both mantle and crust. Some, some geologists classify it as that, some do not. I like to think of it this way. The lithosphere is the gray in between black and white. So it is the middle part so of between the crust and the mantle. 
It has characteristics, a little bit of characteristics of both, okay? So we have the lithosphere, which is where tectonic plates are. And we're going to talk about tectonic plates later on. And then we have the asthenosphere. Now the asthenosphere is where it supports the tectonic plates. Tectonic plates. Okay? Now, not only does it support the tectonic plates, you might be like, well, is it solid or not? Yes, it is solid, but it is rocks that are moving, okay? So it is solid, but slowly moving. Okay, now, I've had a lot of my students, they got a little bit confused about this because I might ask them, hey, kiddo, where are the tectonic plates located? And they might say, well, Ms. Hagen, tectonic plates are located in the asthenosphere and they're located in the lithosphere. And I'd be like, well, you got half of it right. Well, let me give you a good analogy that I think really helps people understand. The lithosphere is like this thing of sprinkles that I have. Oh, wrong bit. This thing of sprinkles that I have. It's beautiful, right? Love these sprinkles, okay? Now, the sprinkles, those are the tectonic plates. The sprinkles are in the container that is the lithosphere. But my hand is like the asthenosphere. Okay, so my hand is supporting the lithosphere, the container, that holds the sprinkles. Okay, that's a way that I think about it. It helps clear it up. So the sprinkles are tectonic plates, the container, is the lithosphere, and my hand is the asthenosphere. It is supporting it and holding it up, okay? Then, after that, we have the mesosphere. Now, what you just really need to know about the mesosphere is this is the lower layer of the um, mantle, okay? And these three things make up the mantle. Pretty simple, right? Really easy to know, okay? So we have the mantle, that includes the lithosphere, the asthenosphere, and the mesosphere. All right, we good? Awesome, so we're gonna move on to the last section of the layers of the earth, which is the core, okay? Now, most people say, oh yeah, the core, that's so cool. That's just the core, right? No, there is another part of the core, which is the outer core and the inner core, okay? Now, the outer core, we have the outer core. The outer core is liquid, iron, and nickel. Okay, liquid, iron, and nickel. Now, I'm going to use the chemistry symbols for iron and nickel. So Fe is iron and Ni is nickel. Now, I've had students ask me, well, Ms. Hagen, how do we know that it's iron and nickel? And you know, that's, that's a really awesome question. That's a great question to ask. And you know, I don't know 100% how, but I do know that a lot of the space debris that is floating around in our, mm, our, our solar system, that we have looked at that, and we're able to look at things that have landed on Earth and that are out in space, like asteroids and things like that. And we have seen that these things are mostly made up of iron and nickel. So it would make sense that our planet would be made up of iron and nickel. Now I'm sure there are some other tests and things that scientists have done and that would be a wonderful thing for you to go and Google and look up. That would be awesome. Who knows? It could be an extra credit question on a test um, about the being iron and nickel. Okay? But it is liquid, iron, and nickel. And what's very important about this is that it spins the inner core. Okay, it spins it. Now, what's so important about it being spun, the inner core being spun? Well, the inner core is solid iron and nickel. Okay, it's solid. And you might be like, well, Miss Hagen, why is it solid? Because it experienced so much intense pressure and it has, there's so much heat, it's hot down there. We would not last at all, okay? So much pressure that it is a solid. Why is it important that it is being spun? 
It's important that it's being spun because what happens, that creates our magnetic field that is around the Earth. Okay, now the magnetic field is really important because it protects us from space junk that's flying around. Okay, if you've ever seen or have watched videos or seen pictures of the Northern Lights, aka Aurora Borealis, okay, if you've seen those, what that is is it's space junk coming in and hitting our magnetic field and we're seeing it disintegrate in the magnetic field and seeing the different colors. So that's one reason why this is very important that this happens. Another thing that's really important about it, it's why our compasses point north, our needles point north on that because of the magnetic field. Okay, so these are what you need to know about the different layers of the Earth. Um, I hope that you're able to get something out of it and if you have any questions feel free to hit me up. You guys have my email and I look forward to our next lesson. Peace out Girl Scout.